Um, thank you for joining me uh, in this presentation. Uh, again, for the sake of um, future or for anybody that starts to join in and chime in, please put yourself on mute. If you have any questions, use the chat bar. I can see the um, any chats or questions that come up as we uh, move along in the pro progress of this presentation. So social media marketing to grow your business. Social media, you're, as you're going to see through the presentation, is very powerful. It's a tool that anybody can utilize. If they utilize it properly, they can grow their business. And depending on how much time you have is depending on how much that you get the return on your investment. And so um, keep that in mind as we go through this presentation. A little bit about me. I'm Kat Ramirez. I have over 30 years of marketing, advertising, and sales experience. Um, so I guess the big thing for anybody who's watching this presentation is I'm in your shoes. I am just like you. I have a small business. I had to build my business from the ground up, just like anybody else. The advantage point that I have that maybe, uh, not the, uh, anybody else that is watching has is that my background is marketing and advertising and sales. So uh, working for major media companies like ABC, NBC, CBS, and Telemundo, um, those experiences really helped me understand the logistics around marketing, advertising, and sell, and how they all intertwine and they play together in regards to helping uh, business owners grow their business and preventing them from uh, really throwing money against the wall and seeing if it sticks. And I'm sure anybody who is watching has heard of that concept, which is not a good concept. Um, okay, so, uh, okay, I have somebody who, um, so forgive me as I have someone who says that they want to join, but they need a passcode. So not, okay. Um, sorry. Uh, I'm just trying to, oh, there we go. So we got some other, I knew people were saying, oh, I need to get in. I need to get in. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, Jim, thanks for joining. Um, okay, uh, appreciate it. Okay, so why should anybody advertise? Okay, so advertising to a business is just like air, food, and water for you and I to survive. So a business has to have advertising marketing as part of their strategy and part of their strategic plan in order for them to survive and succeed and to be a part of that foundation of their business. Just like you create a business plan, you should have a marketing plan that aligns. And so that will help as you grow that your marketing plan will change and just like your business plan will change as well. Okay, so some really good facts to know uh, and anybody going into a business should know these facts. You know, the first one is there's over 30 million small businesses in the U.S. The second fact, which is really, to me, surprising is there are over 570,000 new businesses created every single month. So 570,000 new businesses. I would think that once the uh, Small Business Association gathers their information, that you'll see in probably 2020 that a lot of businesses were created as well as 2021 as a result of what the pandemic created. Um, so job losses, as well as businesses closing, and then businesses will tip typically what happens when there's a huge adversity, anytime there is a recession, depression, any of those things, that's when small businesses surge. 
That is the optimum time for businesses to surge and people to create a business opportunity for themselves. So I'm sure that as the uh, statistics evolve and come to fruition, we'll see that the numbers in 20, 2020 and 2021 will be uh, pretty high. So what are the results of these big numbers that we see um, for small businesses and the reality of being unprepared or overly prepared? 50% of businesses will fail within the first year, and that is a reality. 95% will fail within five years. So the numbers really are loud and clear to me. And for any entrepreneur or business owners, they have to be aware of the facts in order for them to survive. Now on the plus or the other side of that realm is, it's not the plus side, is the other side of that realm is over 85% of businesses don't advertise at all. And the number one reason businesses say that they don't advertise is because they say they can't afford it. So in reality, as I showed you the cup of water and that businesses need to have marketing and advertising as part of their strategy, a business can't afford not to advertise or market their business. If they choose not to do anything, okay, the only person that's going to know about their business is themselves. That is it. And they're just hoping that someone is going to haphazardly find them. So this is the plus side. The good news is, and um, this is a really good stat, 76% of consumers say that if you advertise, no matter what you do, it doesn't matter, okay, uh, they, they will remember you. If you did some type of marketing and advertising and you hit them, they are telling you that they will remember you and they will shop you because you have reached out to them. So you've made an impression. So if the stats say, you know, 50% will fail in the first year, 95% in the, and within five years, and then if we're saying 85% of businesses aren't doing anything at all, the stats are telling you that 76% of consumers are saying, if you do something, they will remember you. So the numbers are there. It's very obvious that if a business needs to have a presence, they need to put some type of messaging out there into the marketplace so that they can survive and succeed. So what are some of the things that you need to know before you do any type of marketing or advertising? Um, you certainly don't need a huge budget to advertise or market your business. Business consistency and fit are the keys to success. You certainly don't need to dilute your marketing. Uh, by spreading yourself thin, by putting yourself on a lot of different places, that is not effective. You know, a lot of people say, well, I'm going to do a little here, a little there, a little there. That's not the effective strategy. Um, and then you, if you do have a small marketing budget or you're um, time starved or limited in your resources, dominate one place, find the one place that you want to dominate and dominate that one place so that it is effective for you. Okay, let's go. Oh, oops. That's it. Okay. So before we start talking about social media and what you can do to grow your business, there's a few things that every business owner needs to know. And I will tell you all of these next few slides, a lot of business owners don't know, and they don't have the answers to. And this is probably one of the biggest things that business owners need to really drill down and think about. They need to think about the marketing strategy and some of the components around it. And the first one is, what is the problem you're trying to solve? So, you know, let's just be hypothetical and let's talk about a pest control, right? What is the problem that they are trying to solve? Well, not all pest controls are eliminating, you know, like let's say mosquitoes, right? Not all pest controls are eliminating, let's say rodents. So some pest controls could be outdoor pests, you know, some could be indoor, some could be termites. So what is the problem you're trying to solve? And here's the reality, you know, the more that you can dumb it down and put it in some type of strategy plan and write it down, the better for you, because, you know, the reality is people overthink things. They think they have to have some kind of elaborate 
you know, uh, answer to this. And there is no elaborate answer. You just need to know and understand what is the problem you're trying to solve. Okay. And the next slide really expands on the problem you're trying to solve. And um, I like this image because for a PI attorney, they say, if you're in an accident, that's very clear, right? If you're in an accident, call me. It's very, and they're telling you the problem and they're telling you how they solve it. So if you're in an accident, call me. Okay. Now with the attorney or pest control, what makes you different? What is your unique selling proposition? Because we're not all the same. So I, I'm a marketer. I have a marketing agency. There are thousands, thousands of other marketers that have marketing agencies. So what makes me different? And so I will tell you my unique selling proposition is that we empower business owners by being transparent. So we are very transparent in our pricing. So not a lot of marketing companies are like that. You know, they're very elusive. They tell you, oh, we can do this and we can do that. And then you, you're like, well, where are the prices? How, how do I know how much, how do I know I can afford you? Well, let's meet, let's meet and let's talk about it. Or they'll say like, what's your budget? Oh, that's how much it costs, you know? So we're very transparent. You're going to know the pricing before you get into the situation. So, you know, if you think about your business and um, what you're offering, think about what your unique selling proposition is. What makes you different? How are you different? And let's use the attorney. How are you different than all the other attorneys as a PI attorney? And maybe for that PI attorney, he doesn't get paid or the client doesn't pay till he gets paid. Maybe that's his unique selling proposition or her, sorry, him or her. Uh, maybe that's their unique selling proposition. Let's say the pest control. Let's say the pest control um, and they did some research and they noticed that all the other pest controls don't return calls. Let's say that that pest control says we return your calls. So if you call, we're going to return your call, you know? And I actually had uh, an industry say that. So I want to say it was a heating air company. They said that um, they did a test and they called all their competitors. And what they found out was their competitors never called back. Okay. And I will tell you what, like when I'm sampling businesses, I think the one thing that I find the most is a lack of follow-up, a lack of someone returning my message or my call. And uh, a lot of times it's because people aren't monitoring the email that they have a generic email to their business, or they're not monitoring those um, uh, contact us forms that come through, or they're not monitoring the social media messages. Okay. So what is your unique selling proposition? And again, it could be as little as we return calls. Okay. So what makes you different from your competitors? Understand and know your competitors. Okay. This is a SWOT analysis. Okay. Strengths, uh, weaknesses, um, opportunities, and threats. So understand your your, uh, you know, the competitors that you have, what are their strengths? What are your strengths? What are their weaknesses? What are yours? And then you can start building the foundation for what your unique selling proposition is. Cause you've got to have one. You got to have one because that's, what's going to help you hang your hat, hat, hat on. That's what you're going to hang your hat on right there. Okay. Um, okay. So the other thing you have to know before you start a marketing plan of any sort so that you are efficient is you have to know who your audience is. So identify who your audience is, create an avatar for this audience, create a um, type of a, um, a prototype. Who is this audience? And when I say avatar or prototype, I mean, describe them, outline them. You know, it is, let's say for my audience, it is a a uh, business owner who's been in business, let's say from uh, zero to, uh, let's say less than seven years. And let's say this business owner has been trying to do it on their own and they're exhausted and they can't, and they're um, out of their own uh, time and energy. So their resources are depleted, um, but yet they do have a little bit of a budget that they can allocate to this. Uh, and they would rather hire someone who's a professional to do it as opposed to 
bringing some teenager in house to, to do the marketing. So create an avatar, know their age, their demographic. Do they have kids? Do they not have kids? You know, are they a family? Are they not a family? So the more that you know about your future audience, the better that you will be when you are targeting. And the other thing is you can have more than one audience. You can have a couple of avatars. So, you know, for me, I identify with minority owned businesses. So I have an avatar for that. I identify for women owned business. I have an avatar for that. And I identify with veteran owned businesses. So there's three different avatars. So I have ideally three different audiences that I go after. And when I speak to the three different audiences, I don't speak to them collectively. I make sure my message speaks to that one audience at a time. Okay. So don't make the mistake of doing a very broad based message, assuming that, oh, I have everyone. Nobody has everyone. Make sure you identify who your audience is and drill it down. So what are your expectations? This is probably the one thing that most businesses don't talk about. And what happens is they set themselves up for failure because they don't talk about it to the person that they hire, or they don't talk about it to themselves, or they don't set goals or expectations. And so in their head, they have these expectations, these, these grandiose expectations that they want instant gratification if they do something or somebody does something or they spend money that they want immediate response. And that is like, that is unrealistic just as a, unless you're going out of business, that is unrealistic. So what are your expectations? Are they realistic? Uh, and when I say realistic, are they too high or are they too low? Okay. Uh, are they realistic? And then uh, how are you measuring against those expectations? How are you holding that person accountable? And that person can be you yourself. If you're doing it yourself, then how are you holding yourself accountable? If it's not you and you hired someone, how are you holding them accountable? And if it's not an employee in house and it's someone outside that you hired, how, how are you holding them accountable? So expectations, um, what are your expectations? Talk about it, write them down. Uh, and make sure that they're part of your marketing plan. Okay, knowing your numbers is probably one of the biggest keys to success. When we do analysis on our clients and we uh, look at, okay, what have they done? We look at, let's look at the history. What have they done? What does that look like? What do the numbers look like? What does the traffic look like? I always do a pre and then during and then after. So you can do the same for your property. So social media has analytics. Websites have analytics. There is uh, email marketing has analytics. Just about everything that you put out there digitally has some sort of analytics. So knowing your numbers is a huge part of understanding is what you're doing working is what you're doing, creating a cause and effect or return on your investment. Okay. So knowing your numbers plays a big key role. Oops. Did I just skip? Oh no. Okay. So why should anybody care about social media? Well, as you can see, can you guys, can you see my little cursor here? I hope you can, as you can see. Okay, great. If you can see from 20 to 21, that is a huge bump in users. And this is US, US based, by the way. You, this is US based, okay, in millions. So 223 million in 2020 and a big jump, okay, big jump to almost 300 million users in 2021. And we're not even over. 2021 is not even over yet, okay? So this is collectively all social media and this is users, it's just active users on social media, okay? So this number is projected to grow to 323 in 2026. So it's not going away, it's not gonna slow down and it is a gorilla. It is a gorilla and a beast. And if someone says that they cannot grow their business on social media, I'm gonna have to call um, bull on that because social media is extremely powerful, extremely powerful. Now, if we look at the different platforms that you have 
and what is being the market share for those platforms. Okay. And again, this is sourced through Statista. And I'm not sure of why LinkedIn is not in here because I know LinkedIn is a big player now. So I'm not sure. So I can't answer that if anybody asks um, because I know I'm a heavy LinkedIn user. But as you can see, Facebook is the dominant, is the gorilla. As much as people love and hate Facebook, it is the gorilla. It is the most dominant social media today, today. And is it going to stay that way? Well, it's it has a very huge leg up. Okay. Uh, so 71% of uh, people, the, you know, users of social media are on Facebook. Okay. And then you see the percentage breakdown to the other social medias. And again, I know LinkedIn uh, should be part of this mix. I would think that LinkedIn is somewhere within this realm here. Uh, and I'm not sure why they did not do LinkedIn. Um, okay. And then if we look at the age demographics, okay, pretty much everybody from 18 and 65 plus is on this one is the 65 plus the bottom one, just so you guys know, the next one up is 50 to 64. Okay. And then the next one is uh, 30 to 49. Okay. And then 18 to 29 is probably the most on social media. Okay. And that's because they have more time on their hands. They typically aren't, they don't have a full-time job uh, and what have you. So uh, sorry about that. So this is the age demographic. And the reason why I want to show this is because a lot of people say, oh, only young people are on, oh my goodness, only young people are on uh, social media. And that's not true. That is completely not true. Or sometimes I will hear, um, clients say, oh, only old people are on social media, meaning 65 plus, even though 65 is not old, by the way, because <laughs> people live to be a hundred now. Uh, so this really should be a gap here. There should be an, an age gap, but as you can see, it's pretty much everyone is on social media at some point. Okay. Okay. So why am I telling you to use social media? Well, it's free. It is completely and utterly free. And if you choose to do this as your yourself, a DIY uh, type of program, then just know going into it that it is a lot of work. Most things that are free are a lot of work to get the results that you want. Okay. And what I'm going to do is just teach you some hacks and some tips around how do you get the momentum that you need from a product that is free, but is massive. It has a huge audience and you have a huge opportunity to capitalize on social media. Okay. So the first thing you want to do is you want to have a plan. You want to have a plan in place. You want to be able to put a budget there. If you have one, you want to be consistent. You want to be able to measure it. You want to know who your audience is. You want to understand what your ROI is going into this return on investment. Okay. You want to plan out your content and understand the content that you have to play with. You want to make sure you manage your time. This should not consume you. It should not <laughs> consume you. I apologize. Um, you want to set goals for yourself. You want to create a strategy. You want to hold yourself or whoever you have managing your social media, hold them accountable. Okay. And then of course, as the last one I have mentioned before, you want to manage your expectations. You want to make sure that it's realistic and, and these things can happen. Okay. So, oops, I don't know why that just said that. Okay. Have a process in place. So what is the process for sales or cap captivating people? Um, so I put one down for you guys. That way you understand that there should be a process in place. So just like with social media or your marketing, there should be a, a flow, a process. With sales, there should be a flow, a process, okay? So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna attract and you wanna use different things to attract your future customers. Hashtags, keywords, <laughs> content. Uh, things like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Oh my goodness. Hey, hey, sorry. Oops. Oh my God. The dogs have gone crazy. 
the next thing you want to do is you want to convert. You want to convert the audience that you are attracting. So you want to drive them somewhere. You want to drive them to a website. You want to drive them to a form, to a car. You want it to do something. So you're converting. Then you want to close. How are you going to close? You've got to be able to capture these people somehow. So you want to be able to communicate them. So if they went to the website, maybe you're using a retargeting ad to communicate to them. Like, why are you gone? Maybe you have them fill out a, um, of the form and you're going to follow up, make sure you do that fast immediately and remind them why they filled out the form. Uh, or maybe they went to a Calendly on your website and they uh, did an appointment. So make sure you're closing and then delight. So your follow-up basically is thanking, thanking them, getting customer uh, feedback, having them do a review, do a survey, things like that. Okay. Oops. Uh, okay. So this is my favorite story when we talk about social media. Social media, if you think about it as an entrepreneur and a business owner, is a big party. So it's no different than when you're physically going somewhere networking. And so this is a really good story for you to understand and have as a frame of reference. So when you're doing social media, keep this in mind, okay? So it is a huge party. So what does that mean? That means that this party, if you were at a actual networking event, there are people that go to different parts of the room, right? Different people go to the different parts of the room. And when those people go to the different parts of the room, there might be a group of people over here in the corner, they're joking and they're telling jokes and they're having fun. Maybe in this networking event, there's another group in the corner and they're eating, they're by the food buffet, right? Or maybe there's a group of people uh, that is in another corner and they're trying sampling, let's say if they had beer or wine there, they're sampling those and those people are like, oh, let's try this or the, you know, they're enjoying that. So basically in a networking event, you gravitate to these groups of people, right? And you're going to gravitate to the one that you most like, that you are going to enjoy, that you're going to be entertained by, okay? And so you'll gravitate to those areas and to those different people, and you'll be uh, enlightened by the conversation or whatever it is that they're doing. Okay, so let's bring it back to social media. Social media is the same way. When you post content on your social platforms, you're doing the same thing. You're putting content out there to gravitate, to pull the people into your, your you know, business wall, your business community that you want so that you can engage and enlighten them with your information. So keep that in mind. If you think about content and you think about how networking works, in a real life situation, it's the same thing when you use social media. So a lot of times I see a lot of people using social media and either A, they do a lot of selling posts and they're selling and selling and selling. That would be like me going to a networking event, walking up to the group of people and saying, hey, I have uh, advertised and social buzz. Do you want to buy social media content for five days a week? And then I go to the next group uh, and I say, hey, I'm Kat with Advertise and Social Buzz. Do you want to buy my hyper LinkedIn program? We deliver leads, you know, blah, 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 blah. So do you understand how that's intrusive? You would never do that, right? You would never go to a networking event and just walk up to people and start selling. You would walk up to people and have a conversation and say, hey, what do you do? Uh, oh, great. Hey, did you hear about this story? Did you see this article about how you can do blah, 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 blah? That's the same for your wall on social media. You're giving them information just like if you, hey, I just met you. Hey, tell me about you. I'll tell you about me. Okay, hey. And then you start referring stuff, right? Because you want to give them information so that they respect you and they continue to have the conversation. That's the party. So if at the end of today, you don't get anything. Please remember that social media is just like a live networking event. What you do in a live working event should also be the same thing that reflects on your social media walls. Okay. Content calendar. What's the easiest and best way to get around 
not feeling stress and being able to produce content and put it out there. So what you can do is, and you can steal this one. I don't care. So Monday, you can have motivational tips. Tuesday, you can give tips on whatever your industry in. So let's say that we are the pest control. And let's say that Tuesday's tips are how to prevent uh, gnats from, you know, being in your house, you know, and maybe we offer a tip there. So, and let's say Wednesdays are your selling, your selling posts, your selling your service or your program or your workshop, whatever it is that you're going to sell, then you sell it. You sell it on Wednesdays. You tell people about it. You tell them what you want them to do. You tell them what you're going to offer, you know, and so forth. you be very thorough and you pick one thing that you're going to sell. And then let's say Thursdays, you're going to put out your content or good to content that is credible that you, you will hang your hat on. So any blog, if you have an original content, then put your blog. If you don't have any, then find a good credible piece that you can share. And there are so many articles and blogs out there that you can source that you can put out there. Uh, videos, same thing. Articles, same thing. So if you don't have your own original source out credible content, do not put stuff out there. That's from your competitor. You're going to regret that. Uh, okay. And then Friday, because Friday is not very active on social media. I always tell people, make it a community post, talk, tell people what to do over the weekend, tell people to give back, tell people to give them guidance and direction on some things that they can do for the community. And that's always a great post for Friday. You'll see that if you don't get any uh, engagement on a business post, a community post always gets a hyper engagement because you're giving back and it's a great post to have. Okay. How many times a week should someone be posting on social media? The, the rule of thumb is three minimum. Okay. Five is excellent. So three minimum five is excellent. Does it matter what three days that you post? No, not really. As long as you post three, I'll be doing cartwheels for you and I'll high five you. So three minimum five uh, is ideal. If you do seven, that's okay. Then that's awesome. That means that you can find more time to do it. But uh, for typically for a B2B business, I do five. If you are retail, seven's great. So just understand the disposition for different types of business, different types of categories of business. Um, and so, and the reason I put the circles here is if you went gangbusters and said after today, I'm going to do five times a week. And then you happen to do Monday, you forgot about Tuesday, you did Wednesday, you forgot about Thursday, you did Friday. That's awesome. Don't set yourself up for failure. Just know that three minimum five is awesome. And if you ever get to five, that is fantastic. Give yourself a reward. But if you only do three, that to me is consistent and that is fantastic. And that is a big win. So what are some things you can do to be consistent? So the first thing that you can do is make sure that your about us is consistent for all of your social media. So there is an about us on your LinkedIn, your personal profile, your Facebook page, your uh, Instagram, your Twitter has a little blurb, make sure all of it matches across the board, that you are consistent, that that message is consistent through all your platforms. Um, I had a business owner who had like three or four businesses and they had their social media out there and a couple of their social media had this other stuff going on. Whereas the, their uh, primary social media, like LinkedIn and Facebook, had the key stuff. And then their secondary social media, which was like the Twitter and Pinterest and others had other stuff on it. And we we're like, you got to be consistent because here's the reality. The more social media you have, the better for your organic SEO search engine optimization. But the only way it works for you is if all of this is consistent, it all has to be consistent for it to work for you. If it's all consistent, you're going to have like great SEO from your social media alone. Okay. Especially for keywords. Um, so sell your service. Don't be afraid to put out there what you're selling. How does it benefit the person that's watching or reading your post? How they need to get a hold of you, what the price structure is, a call to action, you know, contact us for a free consult. 
throw your website, throw your email, throw your calendar lead link, put some hashtags. Don't be afraid to really throw it out there because when you're selling yourself, when you're selling your service, you want to be as transparent as you can and not be elusive. So you want, so if it's an entry level program that you have, then put the entry level program, because I'll tell you what, uh, we have the $99 hashtag social buzz. That's our entry level program. That's how we get most of our clients. And then we upgrade. So don't feel like you have to put your most expensive product out there. Um, and then also don't feel like you have to put the most least expensive, put the thing that is the, the bread and butter for you. What is it that people are buying from you? What is it that people are interested in of your services? Okay. So in your posts, so if you're doing selling posts, you have to create some kind of call to action and call to action means you're telling your audience what you want them to do learn more, book a free consult, join today, shop now, free consult, download now, get to any of these things work, but make sure you have it. So when I look at people's posts and I look at, at their selling posts of what they did before, they, first off, I, I never saw a lot of selling posts. And secondly, they would talk about, um, you know, SEO, SEO is great for your business. You should think about doing SEO. It will rank you. It will do this and do that. And then they leave it and they just cut it dry. So there's nothing that says you should do this or go here or whatever. There's no instruction. So make sure that you give some sort of call to action. Okay. Engagement uh, and responding to comments. Okay. So video gets the highest amount of engagement. And if you get comments, you have to respond to comments. The only way the algorithm works for you is if you're responding to comments. If you do not respond to comments, you're out, the algorithm on any social media is not going to work in your favor. So you've got to start responding to comments. And even if it's as simple as thank you or awesome or whatever, you've got to respond to comments when you get comments, any comments. Uh, and if you do get a derogatory comment, my suggestion would be to hide it. Don't delete it. If you delete it, the person who left the comment will get alerted and you're only going to agitate it. You're putting fuel to the fire. So if someone leaves a derogatory comment, first off, I'm going to say that's awesome because you got an engagement. And secondly, please don't delete it. Just hide it. If you hide it, they think their comment is still there. So they have no idea that it's hidden. Um, videos are super effective on any social media platform. Doesn't matter what platform you're on. At the end of the day, the prediction is that video will take over all of social media. Like you'll see nothing but video and they're predicting in three years that you'll see nothing but video. So if you're not doing video now, you're missing the boat and just know that within three years, all of social media will be nothing but videos. At the end of the day, all you're trying to do is you're trying to become an expert and a resource. So all the content that you're putting out there, you're just trying to show that your future customer is that you're an expert and you are a resource. When you gain that authority and that respect and that trust, I promise you people will come to you and you'll be the go-to for them. What are some other things that you can do? You can certainly do contests. So giveaways are great. Nobody's going to enter a contest if they don't want your goods or services. So that's a great way to collect emails, uh, to get a sampling. Okay. Uh, it's a great way to get people to engage in your posts, um, and to comment or to like and share the, okay. So paid ads. Um, this is a great slide. So what is the difference between boosting, which is that little button here and doing paid ads, which is in the ad manager. So it's a paid campaign, paid ad. So here's the biggest difference that I can tell you between the two, because there is a big difference. So boosting a post means it's using unsold inventory. And I had someone ask me and they're saying, well, isn't it unsold inventory if you do a paid ad? 
No, there's two different types of inventory. Unsold inventory is inventory nobody wants. So when you hit the boost button, it's giving you the bottom of the barrel and putting your message there. It's a quick fix. So this is Facebook's way of selling a cheaper version of an ad that will get higher visibility, but it's in areas that are unsold. So not as effective, not as uh, a premium, not as the, the most premium area that you want because nobody else wants it either. Okay. A paid ad is very strategic. It's very strategic and a lot goes into it so that you're going to get the most bang for your buck. And it's very, very, very targeted based on the ad type, the audience. There's a lot of parameters when there is a paid campaign. So that is the biggest difference. So I'm not saying this is bad. I'm saying worst case scenario, sure, do it if you have no way to do your own paid ads. But it's not like the ideal way to run your business, especially for those businesses that say, I boost all the time and I never get results. Well, you maybe you need to stop boosting because it's not effective. Okay, getting reviews. Reviews helps. I don't care if the reviews on uh, Google or on Facebook or Yelp, you got to get reviews. Reviews build credibility. People hire people based on reviews. The more public reviews you have, the better. Even if you have one or two, the more that you have, the better. If you try to succeed and survive your business without reviews, you're going to see eventually that that is going to be damaging and it's not going to help your business because we are so much in a review type of environment. If I do an Uber, the Uber driver reviews me and I review him. If I uh, order food through DoorDash, the DoorDash reviews me and I review them. If I, uh, and I just recently, if I sell something on Facebook marketplace, that person reviews me and I review them. If I buy a service or product on uh, most websites, I have to review them and they review me. It is a very much a transparent system that is growing and it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So if you don't start asking for reviews, it's common now, so you can, if you don't start asking for reviews, you're going to get left behind. So you might as well start asking for them from people that love and adore you, as opposed to wait for someone to be um, repulsed and leave an angry review. You're in control. Optimize your LinkedIn profile. That's another opportunity to uh, generate leads and captivate people. And that's a whole new workshop in itself. Um, so at the end of the day, what I would suggest for you, just quickly, make sure you have a nice banner. Make sure that your picture profile is clear. Make sure that you have dialogue under your name and not just a title. A title means nothing and you have an opportunity to sell your services right underneath your name. And it's this blurb. And I want to say it's like 150 word count, something like that. Max it out, max it out, put as much as you can and max it out. Uh, and then um, the other optimization is to make sure that you identify the services you provide. LinkedIn usually asks you to provide all this stuff. Uh, it walks you through it. If it asks for it, fill it out, do it. Don't leave it blank. It's helping you optimize your profile. Okay. Okay. That's a lot. There's so much more you can do. Um, just know that there is a lot that you can do, but also know that social media, you can seriously captivate and grow your business. Um, this is a great story and it's a great way to end the presentation as I know we're um, cutting really short on our time here. So McDonald's, I love using this example and um, McDonald's is well-known. It's a, it's a multi-billion dollar company that's well-branded. They started off as a mom and pop shop um, and they are now probably one of the biggest gorillas for fast food chains. And so 
the reason I like talking about McDonald's is because McDonald's started off as a mom and pop shop in small little Illinois, just like anybody else. The example or what I want to talk about is McDonald's today. McDonald's today, um, the well-branded multi-billion dollar um, machine that it is. You can't, women, I mean, babies come out of the womb asking for nuggets. That's how well-branded McDonald's is. McDonald's has done a great job just branding their business and their model. And so the thing I want you to resonate, just big picture. So not thinking about their budget and not thinking about, you know, what are the social platforms and what, it, what is it they do, they do. Think big picture. So McDonald's to this day, the well-branded multi-billion dollar machine, you'll never, ever, ever see McDonald's not market themselves one day. You'll never, you'll never see them go blank. Never, never in their lifetime. You will never see that happen. McDonald's knows that if they don't remind you and I every single day to buy a Big Mac, they will lose hundreds and thousands of dollars and they do not want to risk that. So my question is always to entrepreneurs and business owners is why would you do anything different? Why would you go a day or two or three without reminding people when and why to shop you? When this multi-billion dollar well-branded machine will never, ever, ever go dark for one day because they know for a fact they will lose hundreds and thousands of dollars. So this is food for thought. And if you ever have had any... Thing. If you took anything out of this, you know, um, you have to know that this is the premise. This is the foundation of why businesses need to market themselves every single day is so that they can remind their future customers when and why to shop you. So at the end of the day, it's, this is a marathon. It's not a sprint. It takes a while and you keep doing it. Two options to grow your business that I always share with business owners is one, you do it, you pound the pavement, you go and knock on doors and bring the business. Two, you hire someone or you pay for marketing or advertising. There is no third option. If businesses choose to do nothing, it's just like a bank or ATM machine. You get nothing out of it. So you put nothing in, you get nothing out. And so, and that's the reward of not doing anything. When do you stop advertising and marketing your business? Never. The only time you stop is when you want to close the doors. When you're ready to close the doors, sure, stop. Don't, don't continue to tell people to buy you because that is when they will go away. Uh, when is it time to hire someone? So a couple reasons. If your work gets so consuming that you don't have time, if you don't have time to put your marketing as a priority, it's time to hire someone. Or if you're doing it and you feel like you're exhausted, nothing's happening, you're exhausted, you're not getting any results, it's time to hire someone. You should never wait till it's too late because then you're going to see that it's already too late to do anything about it. That's it. That's all the, the information I have for you. If you have any questions, Certainly, uh, let me know in the chat or, you know, speak out, but um, this is pretty much the basic premise of growing your business, some, a good foundation for some of the strategies of what you can do. Uh, if you have any questions, certainly reach out to me, um, book a time to chat. Uh, I'm a free, I'm available, uh, and I'm always here to help. If there's someone that you know that could use um, some help or maybe some guidance, certainly refer us. We would love, we love referrals and uh, happy to take them. So uh, as I wrap this up, if there is anything else or anybody have any questions, please um, definitely let me know. Otherwise, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. and. Um, I wish everyone the best of luck moving forward. And uh, until next time, you guys got this.
And uh, thank you again for your time.